I was reminded of the need to be on the watch for cruise ripoffs when I got one cruise line recently to give me back $1,800 of the fare I'd paid when I saw exactly what they were doing. I'm going to show you how I spotted it, what I did, and nine other ripoffs to watch out for these days. Welcome aboard, I'm Gary Bembridge, and it's my goal to make it fun and easy to discover, plan, and enjoy unforgettable cruise vacations. Now, more than ever, cruise lines want to get us to pay as much as possible for our cabin, and they have departments and clever computer dynamic pricing models to make this happen. Now, this is where I feel that personally I'm ripped off too often because I book early. And they often penalize me by later charging people much less for the same cabin as I've booked if the cruise isn't selling that fast. So what do I do? Simple, I track fares and I ask for a price reduction, upgrade, or onboard credit to match the new lower fare. It's really easy to do on sites like cruisewatch.com where I simply input my cruise and they alert me when fares change. I also sometimes use Cruise Critic because cruisewatch.com doesn't cover all of the lines, particularly UK-based lines. That's how I got that $1,800 back on my Azamara Quest Mediterranean cruise because I saw the fare dropped and they'd scrapped the solar supplement that I'd been charged. On my recent Viking Sky Adriatic and Oceana Marina Panama trips, I was upgraded from a balcony cabin to a suite, again when I was alerted that fares had changed. Now I have suggested this in other videos and I have instructions on how to do it on my blog tipsfortravelers.com. I get messages every single week from passengers all around the world that this has worked for. While this is a big one, I found more ripoffs actually happen once I'm on board the ship. Many lines have started to introduce all-inclusive add-on bundles with supposedly large discounts of up to 50% versus buying the items separately. Most bundle three onboard costs like Wi-Fi, gratuities, drinks, excursion discounts, or specialty dining, and come with names like celebrities always included, Holland America have it all, Princess Plus, Princess Premier, and Norwegian Cruise Lines free at sea. But I think they're potentially misleading and can be a ripoff because they don't work for everyone. For me, for example, because they only include basic Wi-Fi, I end up paying to upgrade to a streaming level anyway. I don't drink alcohol, so the drinks package is wasted on me. Now, talking to passengers who do drink though, those bundles often fall short for them too, because they're usually the basic drinks package and have many limits like only cover drinks up to $12 or $15, or exclude many brands, or only use house spirits, beers, or wines. Most passengers I speak to seem to upgrade to a better package in the end anyway. Now, I believe lines have introduced these because they've worked out that they make more money this way. Why else would they do them? So what do I do? I don't buy the packages any longer. I just buy the things I need and know I will use, like better Wi-Fi. And I often buy it online before the trip if they offer discounts. I found in most cases I'm spending less now than when buying the bundled package. But at least do a comparison before you buy them. If going that package route or on lines like Carnival and Royal Caribbean that do not currently have at the time of recording those all-inclusive bundle deals, watch out for a rip-off potentially around drinks packages. Again, remember cruise lines must have worked out that drinks packages make them more money than not having them. Drinks packages on Royal Caribbean or Carnival can cost between $400 and $600 per person for a seven night cruise. And that's the price before they add an 18% gratuity. They require everyone over 21 in your cabin to usually buy that package and have lots of small print terms and conditions that limit the number of drinks or cost of drinks that are actually included. So before buying one, use an online drinks package calculator. The best I found are on cruisely.com and on cruisemummy.co.uk. You choose your line, input how many drinks you think you're going to have per day, and it calculates if it's worth buying the package or not. Now many people doing that tell me they find it's often not, especially if you have a very port intensive cruise, having a drinks package. 
Talking of ports, another ripoff in my view are cruise line excursions. Cruise lines try to scare us with the risk of factors of not using them, like if a cruise line excursion is delayed getting back to the ship, they will only wait for it, but not for anyone else. Secondly, that they've carefully screened all the operators. And thirdly, they talk about convenience. However, I pay a premium for those three benefits. The cruise lines don't run excursions themselves. They contract those out to local companies and they're making a markup which can range, talking to various insiders, anything up to 300%. Also, by going that route, I'm limited to what they have. So it's a bit of a ripoff in a way because there's many, many more things that one can do in a port. So here's what I do. First of all, I look at self-exploring. If there's something the line offers that I want to do, I check how close it is to the port first or if it's very easy to get to. For example, in Bergen recently, instead of doing the costly cruise line excursion to go on the Florbein funicular up to the top of Mount Floyen, I found it was literally a 10 minute walk from the ship and cost almost nothing to use the funicular. I also look at hop on off of buses. They normally go to all the main sites, leave from the port, and they're more flexible and cheaper, especially if you're the sort of person who likes panoramic coach tours, for example, a hop on up of bus is a great alternative. In the Caribbean, instead of booking a cruise line beach excursion, I use a site called resortpass.com. For example, on an upcoming Coningsdam, Mexico trip, they've got some stunning resorts in Puerto Vallarta for way less than a cruise line transfer and excursion. However, if you don't want to self-explore, my go-to alternative is using a third-party provider like VentureAshore.com and ShoreExcursionsGroup.com. There I input my cruise line, my ship and departure date, and it brings up all the excursions that are available through them for my ports. They're usually much cheaper than the cruise line option and I find has a greater variety of tours generally. Excursions are not the only area I feel are rip-offs where the line has contracted them out. There are things on board that I had always assumed were run by the cruise line, but actually contracted out that, because of that, have an element of rip-off too, I think. The spa is run by contractors, and in my view, horribly overpriced. Perhaps as the contractor needs to make a profit, as well as the cruise line, on top of that profit. There are three things that I think add to the rip that ripoff. First of all, the high price rockets up after the treatment because there's an auto added gratuity of 18% normally. Second, many miss that as the slip you sign at the end has a blank line for gratuity and many people add a gratuity on top of the gratuity. Thirdly, the therapists are trained, incentivized and required to push more treatment series and also sell products. Now my partner Mark, often falls for this ripoff despite my best efforts. Often he ends up buying a series of treatments for supposedly an issue identified in his first massage like dry skin or a tight back and he ends up buying costly products which he never uses. So here's what I do. I either only go to the spa if I've got leftover onboard credit and I always go on a port day. There are big reductions on port days because it's less busy. Most cruise lines also contract out the photography department. Personally, I think it's a big ripoff, especially as photos have remained incredibly costly despite the shift to digital. It was gonna cost me $40 for just two photos that I'd taken on my Disney Magic Cruise recently, $40 each for a digital photo. Although I did actually speak to several parents and they were actually very happy paying the over $300 cost of a photographic package because they found they had around 200 photographs taken of their kids posing with all the characters. So they were saying it's only cost me a couple of dollars per digital photograph. So that's something to bear in mind. But on most lines, it's still working out at $20 to $30 per photograph. What do I do? I never buy the photographs. I keep an eye out though on the locations where they're taking photographs because of course they know the absolute best locations and many people use that like I do when the ship's quiet to either take a selfie or get another passenger to take a photograph with my camera or smartphone. One thing that baffles me and experts seem to agree on as a ripoff 
is the art auctions and art sales. This is another contracted out service and it's normally either Park West or Clarendon Fine Art. The art auctions and sales are pitched as an investment with free champagne hosted auctions and prize draws to entice you and me in. However, many of the arts seem to be prints or limited series and I feel are probably unlikely to be investment or collect grade. Now to avoid being ripped off, don't go into it thinking it's gonna be an investment. But if you'd like a piece of art, pay what you feel it's worth for you to have, but don't think you're investing. What do I do? I don't buy art, but as many people who run the gallery and the auctions are incredibly knowledgeable about art and art history. If like on my recent Cunard Queen Elizabeth Western Mediterranean trip, they are running enrichment talks about well-known artists or anything to do with art, I actually do go to those. Now I get asked a lot about cruise line insurance, particularly cruise line trip protection. And if this is a ripoff, now I'm not an expert on finance, so I'm giving you my personal perspective here. I personally found cruise line trip insurance policies don't usually give me the same or as good cover as I can get from a third party specialist insurer. They also don't always cover my pre-existing conditions. I found medical cover limits are often lower and coverage starts and ends often with the cruise. And so when I'm doing flights pre and post stays, I'm not always covered. And if the cruise line goes under, the policy seems to go under with it too. So what do I do? I don't buy cruise line cover and I use third party travel insurance providers. I take it out as an annual policy because I can here in the UK. And so I'm covered even if I have to cancel a booking that I've made. I'm covered all the time. Now I use a company in the UK called Allclear. I'm not recommending it. I'm just telling you who I use. In the US, I hear lots of people talking about Allianz or tripinsurance.com to price compare. So while I can't recommend any specific insurer, I would recommend at least comparing that to the cruise line one. I cannot talk about ripoffs without mentioning one that affects me a lot as nine out of my 10 trips are solo. And it's really the struggle to do with those large solar supplements. I often pay the same as I would if my partner Mark was coming along too. It's a quite complicated area and so I have a whole video around this called How I Cruise Better, Cheaper and Smarter Solo where I go into this in much more detail. So if that affects you, please check that one out. I also think the onboard shopping advisors are a ripoff. I mostly find them on my Alaska and Caribbean cruises where they hold events recommending shops, suggesting deals and giving us various incentives. Now, as all the stores in the program have paid fees to be in there and the advisors are funded ultimately by the shop through fees and commissions, I remain very skeptical. They recommend the same old chains, Diamonds International, Effie, Del Sol and so on. But bear in mind that there is a hidden agenda there and money is changing hands behind the scenes. So I don't necessarily feel that they're going to direct me towards the shops that perhaps have the best deals in those ports. What do I do? Well, I actually go to the talks because they're actually very entertaining and they often have lots of freebies I handed out or raffles. And basically though, anybody that I'm with, I please plead with them to at least check the prices online if they are gonna buy anything in those port shops. If you find this interesting and want to know seven things that I found smart cruisers do, watch this video which starts with the one thing that transformed all my cruises for the better. See you over there.